done. Uh, one thing I would like you to cover, Jane, is um, to tell the listeners what happened when you first filed these charges, how they tried to make it into a veterinary uh, problem, what, what Baxter did releasing the bird flu. That was pretty amazing. Yes. Um, well, I filed the charges, and the police investigated. However, the health minister had to reveal, he was forced to reveal how complicit he was in this whole thing when he had to answer parliamentary questions. And that's when it emerged that he had sent vets to look at this uh, incident and had tried to turn it into a veterinary incident. So the police are doing their job here. The anti-terrorism unit is now investigating, but the health minister is not doing his job, he's trying to cover up, and he's been forced to reveal the extent of his own criminal behavior himself when he had to answer parliamentary questions on this topic, which he's obliged to do by law. So he had to incriminate himself. So the next set of charges that I'm going to file here are against him because he is failing to do his job. He's covering it up. He's misleading the Austrian public about a very serious incident. And um, if the police do their job, I'm afraid the health minister is going to end up in pretty serious hot water because this is an obvious crime, and he has been obviously covering up this crime. So I'm pleased to say the, the, the law enforcement branch of Austria is doing its job, and the health minister could well be in serious trouble here. Well, these are crimes against humanity, and what's amazing to me is that all of these individuals, under the guise of public health, are actually getting ready to unleash this vaccine that is going to cause the biggest um, death rate we've seen. Uh, I'm sure it's going to supersede the 1918 flu, and they're doing it under the guise of public health. And um, I'm so glad to hear that the Austrian officials are actually uh, taking notice of all this, of course, what they have to realize, and, and what I'm trying to get people to tell others in this country uh, involved with the police and things as they're trying to file these charges is to let them know this is going to kill your family too. You have to take this personally. This is not just some, you know, thing that's out there and it's no big deal. This is going to affect everyone. Everyone is going to be affected that takes this vaccine. They are going to die or get very, very sick have lifelong consequences to this, and um, the fact that they're doing this under the guise of public health is uh, the perp perfect example of opposite day, as Patrick always talks about opposite day. And um, another thing I wanted you to mention, Jane, is what happened in Switzerland on that, uh, I don't know if it was a subway or a train car, um, how they actually exploded a, a package of uh, of this material that was flown in from Mexico, and what was the response of the officials? Well, again, I, I filed uh, charges concerning this incident in a packed um, intercity train in Switzerland where, for some reason, an official, I think linked with who, was transporting a container with swine flu vials, and it exploded at peak time in the middle of this train, and the aerolized... Um, you know, a swine flu bacteria or virus um, actually spread around the carriage and, and potentially infected about 60 people who were just allowed to go home. And now Switzerland, in particular in that area, has a high incidence of swine flu. And there's a case of one Swiss person who was infected in Switzerland, and nobody knows how he did it. Um, I haven't heard any word about how the authorities are progressing on that investigation in Switzerland. But the mainstream media here in Europe is picking it up. There was a report in the German media about this incident uh, today. So people are getting to hear about it. They're starting to ask questions. They're starting to ask, why is this stuff being transported on packed intercity trains? Why is the package faultily packed? Why is it kind of exploding in the middle of a, of a carriage? And why is nothing done to investigate this incident? Um, and I think it's, the time has come for all of us now, whether we're in the army or whether we're civilians, to start asking questions of those in authority and call them to account for doing the job they're supposed to do. And if they don't do that job, 
um, to to hold them responsible, even if they're the president, even if they're the field marshal, the general, the four star, whatever. These are people who are accountable before the law, and they're accountable to us. And it's time we held them to account. I think exactly. And um, actually, I will soon have a new YouTube video up. I actually got onto C-SPAN a few days ago. Um, and there was a number of people that called in. They had some talking head from the Heritage uh, Foundation on there. And uh, he actually brought up the situation in Japan a number of years ago uh, where these terrorists uh, let loose some, some kind of uh, chemical weapon. I forget what, which chemical weapon it was. And he was talking about how they were terrorists. Um, the situation that you just explained, that's a terrorist act. For them to unleash this bird flu vi- uh, virus, on a crowded train at peak hours and uh, not do anything about it, not even take down the names of the people that were exposed to the virus. This is such a clear example of them intentionally infecting the public and letting the people go home and communicate with others so that they will spread the swine flu in Switzerland. Yeah, I think all they did was take down the names. They didn't even cut the forensic test of what this virus was. They didn't monitor the health of the people. All they did was take down the names of the passengers. Oh, they did um, take down their names. Okay. Th- th- yes, but, but um, I, that, that was one thing they did do. But there was um, no follow-up. They didn't check. The no follow-up. No right. check-up. Yes. And there's no reason for this, uh, this uh, virus, which came from Mexico City, apparently lab affiliated with WHO and, and most likely Baxter, um, why it was taken to Zurich and put on the train there. It could have been flown straight to Geneva, where the lab is. Geneva is closer to Mexico City than Zurich. That means flying right across Switzerland to um, put this vial on an intercity train um, to transport it back to Geneva. And there are no direct flights from Mexico City to Zurich. So they had to either take a private plane, a cargo plane to fly to Zurich. Um, It just doesn't make sense. If they could afford a private plane or a cargo plane to fly to Zurich, why couldn't they afford proper transport from Zurich to uh, Geneva with this virus? The whole story is bizarre. Um, Well, Jane, what was the reason they were taking it to Zurich in the first place? Were they taking it to a vaccine manufacturer? Well, no, they were taking it to the National Influenza Laboratory. Um, So who must have been involved? Because who is the coordinator for this kind of activity? Who is supposed to get samples of the virus from from Mexico City and companies like Baxter and and deliver it to um, national flu centers so they can allegedly work on a vaccination um, that was the the the, the reason given um, for for the whole whole exercise was for for the Swiss people to be protected against this virus. Right, and and the whole idea that they're going to take the virus, which is allegedly so dangerous that they had to declare a pandemic level six, <laughs> so that they could put the vaccines on fast track, and they're going to take that virus and put it in a syringe, and all of a sudden it becomes a good thing and it's going to protect you. I mean, the whole idea of this is it's totally insane. Uh, this is sorcery from Pharmakia, and uh, this is what's going on. And the people that we're talking to, Jane, on this broadcast, you're reaching military around the world. Yes. Uh, it's so important for them to hear about what you're doing. And um, I know that you lost your job this week. Um, what was the excuse given to you by your employer as to why they were terminating your employment? Well, there was no reason given to me. I just uh, had my next few reports lined up. I work as the European correspondent, and I report about renewable energy. And then just out of the blue, I got an email saying um, uh, I wasn't supposed to <laughs> contribute anything more. you know. And um, I've been working there for over two years. I've won an award from them for my reports. I have never had any complaint or problem and um, so this really came out of the blue and I believe is quite clearly linked to my criminal charges and that is why I'm going to file a lawsuit because I think there is enough proof of this Um, and it's an attempt to intimidate 
uh, me, uh, but I'm not going to be intimidated because uh, this is much more important than my job, and uh, I'm not going to back down. Well, I just want to say, Jane, that you are um, such uh, an example of, of a person of the highest, moral character, what you've done. Um, I'm just so proud to know you. I've been fighting this war for 12 years, and now that we've reached the point where the entire global population is threatened with genocide, um, it's time for people to now wake up and realize exactly what they're doing, what their plan is, and I 